It should be of no surprise to anybody watching this video about what's been happening globally, particularly in Israel in regards to its relationship with Palestine and the terrorism and the war that just broke out just the other day. And for me personally, I've been going through X and looking at all of the horrific imagery of what's been happening to innocent people there in Israel. And what I've also been seeing as I have been looking at what's been happening in the world, I have also been seeing a lot of bickering and argument back and forth about who started what and who's really at fault. And so I decided, you know what, I'm not getting any clear information about what's happening on the internet right now. So I really need to spend some time in prayer and ask God to give me clarity about his heart, about what's happening in the world right now. And where do we go? How should we interpret what's happening? How should we engage? How should we respond to this crisis, to this new war that's happening in Israel? Now, if you're a follower of Christ or you've been a follower, at least of my channel for a little while now, you know that sometimes I will talk about end times theology. I'll talk about when Jesus promises that there will be an end to everything we see on heaven and heaven and on earth, he's going to start everything new all over again. One of the things that we see throughout scripture is tension in the Middle East. We see tension particularly around Jerusalem as being one of the things that will be a sign that Jesus is coming back really soon. And so we need to pay attention. We do not have the luxury as believers in Jesus Christ to bury our heads in the sand and not pay attention to what's happening in the world. However, we need to watch what's happening prayerfully and ask God, how do you want us to respond and participate in what's happening in the world? And there's five things, particularly in this video, that I want to discuss that the Lord has been pressing in my heart about how we need to filter what's happening in this war between Israel and Palestine. Number one, here's what I want to tell you. Regardless of what you believe, regardless of which side you stand for, Israel or Palestine, we have to remember this. The word of God says that God is willing that no one would perish. This is what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. It says, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever would simply believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. This isn't exclusive for one group of people. It's not like God looks at one group or another group and says that one is a favorite to him or another, or one cannot inherit eternal life. No, the love of God is not bound by one people group. So we need to recognize regardless of who said what or who did what, number one, the Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned and we all deserve the wages of our sin, which is death in this life and the life to come. Hell for eternity because of our rebellion against a perfect, holy, and just God who is worthy not just of our love and admiration, but also of our fear and our reverence. We are all guilty. And yet the goodness of God gives us the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ for everybody. Okay. So we need to recognize that God loves the Palestinians just as he much, as much as he loves the Israelites. And that's going to offend some of us. It will offend some of us to recognize that God's love for some of these people that we would say are the worst people on planet earth. You see, the, the, way, the degree to which another man offends us is nothing in comparison to the way that you and I have offended God because of our rebellion and our sin. And when we are humbled by that, we can extend mercy and grace towards everybody, recognizing that we don't deserve the love of God ourselves. God is not willing that anyone would perish, neither on the Israelite side or the Palestinian side. Number two, with that in mind, we also need to agree with the word of God that God abhors the shedding of innocent blood. Proverbs chapter six, verse 16. It says, there are six things the Lord hates, no seven things he detests, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent. When we see what's happening in Israel right now, when not just men, not just military aged men who are ready to lay down, lay down their lives for the, for the sake of their country, women, 
children and the elderly are also being slaughtered in Israel or have been slaughtered over the past few days. And I'm not saying that stuff hasn't happened in, in Gaza Strip either, but what I am saying is when the innocent, the blood of the innocent are shed, is shed, God has a problem with it. And if we are going to agree with God, if we're going to be on God's side, we need to love what he loves and we need to hate what he hates. And what is happening to innocent people in Israel right now, God does not co-sign. God does not look, God does not turn his eye away from it. God abhors the shedding of innocent blood. And if we're going to be on God's side, if we're going to get God's heart about what's happening, our heart needs to break for what's happening to these people. Number three, God calls us to pray specifically for Jerusalem. Okay. This is what it says in Psalm 122, verse six. It says, pray for peace in Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. What we need to recognize as Christians is Jesus didn't invite us into some unique religion that kind of stands off on its own. No, Jesus lived as a Jew, was born a Jew, died a Jew, will come back as a Jew. He's the king of the Jews. Jesus came primarily for God's original chosen people, the Israelites. But in his mercy, in God's mercy, God extends that invitation for eternal life to everybody, all Gentiles, anybody who isn't even a Jew on planet earth. But we need to recognize that God's heart, first and foremost, is to fulfill his promise, his covenantal promise, to his original children, the children of Abraham, the Israelites, the Jews. God will, it says right here, may all who live, who love this city prosper, whether or not we agree with everything happening in Israel. The fact we have Jews in Israel who reject the Messiah, who reject Jesus Christ, yet Yeshua HaMessiah. We have Jews who are rejecting him as their Messiah, yet God's desire for you and for me is to contend for their welfare, to pray for their blessing, to pray that God would prosper, to pray that God would open up their eyes to see who Jesus Christ, their Messiah is. That's God's desire for us. We cannot, we cannot pick sides in this fight to a degree where we neglect what God calls us as his people to do, to pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel, to pray for them, to pray for their city to prosper. God calls us to pray for Jerusalem. That's number three. Number four, here's what I want to encourage you with. We must walk by faith and not by sight. We must walk in the spirit regarding all the information being uh, delivered right now all over the internet about what's happening. Because here's the challenge. We most likely are getting our information from worldly sources. We're getting our information. People that might be, they might be doing a great job. They might be doing their job with integrity. We can't tell. We, we don't know who's really, do, who's really communicating the true narrative about what's happening right now. We are living in an age of an avalanche of information. It is impossible for us to look at all of the data, what everyone is saying, and to be able to discern completely just based off what, what's being said, who is right and who is wrong. We need to have spiritual mind. We need discernment beyond what we can see with our eyes. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth because Jesus himself said that this would happen in these days. He says in Matthew 24, verse six, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars or rumors of wars in other translations, meaning there will be conflicts. In these days, in these days, before Jesus comes back to judge the earth, there will be conflicts that aren't even really conflicts. There will be conflicts, especially, I'm telling you right now, with the, with the elevation and acceleration of AI, there will be conflicts, conflicts, quote unquote, in air quotes, that will be communicated and broadcasted that aren't even real, that have not even happened. Am, am I saying that what's happening right now isn't happening? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we need to be aware. If we look to the world for clarity, all we will get is confusion. We must look to Jesus. We must look to God. We must ask for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and counsel to be able to navigate through this situation. And then Jesus says this. Here's the final thing I would say. 
Number five, the most important thing, and then we're going to pray briefly. We must not panic. When we see all of these things happen, this is what it finally says in Matthew 24 at the end. It says, yes, these things must take place, but the end won't immediately follow. And then it says this in John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Jesus says, he's not telling us everything that's happening in the end times so we can run around like a a chicken with its head cut off. No, Jesus wants us to live in peace. He says, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. My friend, we as the people of God, as the people who put their faith in Jesus Christ, we have a hope. We have hope. We got hope. There's hope, but there's only hope in Jesus Christ. We need to anchor ourselves to Jesus. We need to not look to the left or to the right. We need to look above and anchor our hope in God. We need to have faith in this season that God is in the midst of fulfilling his word, which he began communicating from the beginning of human history. And we're seeing scripture literally unfold before our eyes right now. What's happening in the world is prophetic and it is a sign that God is on the throne and that he will fulfill everything that he wa- that he said that he would fulfill. And that also must put a healthy reverence and fear in us that we must abide in him. We must hold on to every word. We must be found ready and attentive in doing the will of our father when Jesus comes back. Because he's coming back soon. And so my, I want to pray for you briefly that you would walk in this peace so that the rest of the world can see the peace that you carry. And then for those of you who don't yet know God, I'll give you a call to action at the end of this. Father, in the name of Jesus, first, we want to lift up Jerusalem. We want to lift up Israel. We ask God that you would bless that country. You would bless that city. We pray, God, that your hand would not depart from that nation. Your hand would be upon that nation. You would bring every person, man, woman, and child to repentance to see that Jesus Christ is their Messiah who came to save them, to set them free from the penalty of their sins, that they would simply turn from their wicked ways and put their hope in him. And God, we pray for the Palestinians. We pray even for Hamas. We pray for every terrorist. We pray for every person who means ill will. God, would you turn their heart and turn their heart towards you that they may receive forgiveness and be granted repentance before their destruction comes. For every hurting family, Father, we pray that there will be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that the comfort, the great comfort that you give us, that you entrust to us, Father, would comfort them in a supernatural way right now. Father, we pray that the shedding of innocent blood would be, the justice would be restored, that justice for the innocent would be brought. And God, we look to you and ask you for wisdom, for clarity, for discernment. Help us navigate through this season. God, we put our hope in you. We thank you, God, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. We thank you, Lord, that the end of the story is written and it is a good ending. We anchor our faith to you in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, that you would keep our hearts soft and ready to do your will and to not grow weary before you come back. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you're in that place where you don't know where you stand with Jesus, you're gonna see a link in the description of this video. I explain clearly what the Bible says about what will happen to you and to me when we die. You'll also see at the end of this video, you'll see another video I did about signs of the end times. I would encourage you to watch it if you're looking at the world and you're thinking this is chaotic, this is confusing. What do we make of this? God wants to give you and me clarity. Leave a comment. I would say even in the comments right now, say amen. God bless Israel in the name of Jesus. If you agree with what the word of God says and hit subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one.